Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming by. I'm here to do a general reading on, well, some of the astrology transits that are happening in July. As I mentioned in my last video, I'm particularly interested in what's happening in the stars for July and August because there's a lot of change and big ones in planets like Venus and Mars and North and South Node and Pluto. Lots going on. But today I'm going to focus, actually weirdly, I was drawn towards the end of the month to the last day of cancer season on July the 22nd. On that day, Chiron goes retrograde in Aries. Chiron is our, it's, it reflects our deepest wounds and our insecurities on a very, very soul level. It's our kind of karmic wounding, but it's also the healing from which we can heal others. It's a very important placement in my world, in my astrological opinion, especially when we're dealing with the North Node too, which is also shifting from Taurus and Scorpio into Aries and Libra in July. So we have the North Node, which is your destined calling, conjuncting Chiron, your deepest wound. What a beautiful feat, what a beautiful transition the healing that comes from this period of time has to do with your destined calling. Now I'm going to focus on what's happening with Venus and Mars. They've been conjunct in Leo for a while. And Venus is going to hit retrograde in Leo on that same day. Now Leo rules the fifth house of the zodiac. And that is all about fun and joy and creativity and children and sex. All the good stuff, all the fun. When Venus goes retrograde there, it can be not that much fun. It really has to couple up there with that Chiron wound because what's going to happen, I think, is that in the collective, a lot of deep insecurities are going to come to the surface as part of your healing process. There could be that you've come in contact recently with a soulmate that doesn't have to be romantic. And also, I'm primarily focusing on the Venus energy right here, which also rules your money and your sense of stability and harmony. So those things are at play too. But sure, it can be romantic as well. But whatever is going on, like whether you're increasing your, your, hold, your money, your career, your reputation, all of that's Taurus energy too. And whether you're increasing all of that stuff, or not, it still requires processing through a lot of wounds that could come to the surface from who knows when. Self-doubts and fears and all those things. So Venus is going on hold for a minute in the house of fun because right now, when this happens, it is a moment of pause, really. Because as that north and south node shift into Aries and Libra, that's Venus and Mars and our points of destiny. For, for a few months now, I've been getting a strong energy of soulmates aligning, because of, partly because of that. That's a huge shift. The Scorpio and Taurus north and south node did a lot for teaching us about our stability and the things that are hidden below the surface and what makes us happy. And there was healing to be done there as well. But this Chiron is very interesting to me as it's coupled here with the, with the Venus. So let me see if there was there something else I wanted to talk about. Oh, yes. Pluto goes retrograde Capricorn as well. So now we're talking about lessons learned because Saturn is the great teacher of the Zodiac. And that ties into that Chiron as well. Basically, it's time to heal. This is the final process. So whatever you might be experiencing, like I said, in terms of things coming to the surface that could stand in the way of your success... Just remember that this is just a final revisit so that the next thing you move into when Pluto goes direct in Aquarius, right? The change, the next thing, the star, the healing, the future. You don't want to carry anything from Chiron with you. Aquarius energy where Pluto is headed is also all about the collective. So this healing 
that Chiron is offering us when it goes retrograde in Aries has to do with what we can bring to the collective. It's attached to that north node. Now Aries is the action taker. It's Mars energy. But right now, on July 22nd, it's going to go on pause. No action. It's a time of reflection. It's actually very beautiful energy because it's what's going to allow in the next form of true love. However, that manifests in your own life. And Venus, like I said, it, it wants balance and harmony and beauty and joy and healing and creativity and all that stuff. So anything that Chiron's up to that could stand in the way of that is going to be coming to the surface so that you can heal it. So that's why it's, you know, doesn't sound like the most fun. That's true. The fifth house is on pause, like I said, but it's going to go direct again. And that carries through right till October. And then the north and south node are firmly in, in Libra and Aries. Then action. Then balance and harmony. Then partnership. Let me see. Did I write down the date? I always forget to write down the date it's going direct. I did. I'm sorry, you guys. But it does go direct again, I promise. And it stays that way for a while. Okay, that's what I have for you today. We also have a full moon in Capricorn coming up on the 3rd of July, which, of course, I'll do a reading for. But for some reason, maybe some people in the collective need this reading right now. This is a collective Venus and Chiron retrograde reading. So let's take a look. Let's get an overall energy card from the Psychic Tarot. This can be anybody, any sign. You'll know you, you don't have to resonate with the entire reading to resonate with some of it. It is a collective message. I hope everybody's doing well. Oh, the five of pentacles. Financial and material changes. Interesting because that's Taurus. That's Venus. And it is to do with money and stability. So you might be currently in a state of like energetic lack or financial feeling limited in some way like it's not prosperous enough and Taurus really likes luxury not just money of course let's get another one what else that's too many just one more please from the psychic tarot for this Chiron Oh, stubborn. One more. Okay, thank you. The sacral chakra. Well, exactly. That's beautiful, actually. Not feeling fed on the inspirational, passionate level. And that's Leo. That's retrograde. It's kind of that that sta that stayed energy. Leo likes to burn and express the sacral chakra and create and engage so there could be a challenge to that right now oh yes on the bottom of the deck there's the wound the three of swords air energy so the three of swords for me is often about the past coming back to the surface at a time when you're ready to take a leap of faith with that Aries I'm talking about it brings up wounds from the past for healing for whatever makes you feel like you can't engage in that sacral chakra energy. Okay. Uh, let me see. Do I want to do the true love? If I can reach these. Okay. What do we have, please? <laughs> Exploding energy. This is, with this three of swords is pretty intense because I'm, it ties right into the sacral chakra, which is where the joy is. So I'm, okay. Oh, look what shot out of the deck. Reparenting yourself. Now this could have to do with childhood things for you. So we could be going way back. And that's what's preventing. That's what's coming to the surface. I'm not going to dig too deep into that three of swords. It's on the bottom of the deck as a, as a hidden energy. 
So it's guiding. But for everybody, that's going to be a little bit different. And there's the healing with forgiveness on the bottom of the deck. I'm sorry if I seem a little bit shaky, you guys. This energy, no wonder I was drawn to it. I was like, why do I have to do a reading for the end of July? There's a lot before that. But I, I just do. I was guided to it. So let's start off with some star codes. Bear with me, everybody. But we are dealing with some sensitive things here. Opposition or confrontation. That's interesting. You could be coming face to face with this. It could be coming up as a challenge that's blocking you. Whatever that Three of Swords is about. Let's go on down. Oh, look it. It's what's hiding your new beginning. Your Ace of Pentacles. And the Three of Swords was on top. All right. Reparenting yourself. Okay. Teaching yourself a different way of thinking. Solar calm. Aries in reverse. Not time to take action. Time to confront some things with this opposition card. And it's a time of getting clarity. The solar calm south node to do with your past. Amazing. The north and south node are doing that shift. And our south node is where we came from. It's what we brought with us karmically into this world. And it's also where we're our gifts come from as we head towards our north node but we're doing that healing in there this reparenting in the sacral chakra which is you know in believing you're worthy you guys what a powerful reading look what shot out the north node heading into aries in july it's i, I told you crazy energy and there we have debilitated or discomfort well, the Three of Swords and the reparenting is very uncomfortable. But look at this. It's like with the Five of Pentacles and the Sacral Chakra, it's like somehow you came to the belief or understanding that you were not worthy, that you were not, you didn't have anything on that level, the Sacral Chakra level, the creative, the sexy, the beautiful. Interesting. Okay, you guys. Um... Let's do the good tarot. Let's see what happened in the recent past. If you're resonating with this situation. Wow, okay. Let's get through it. The Ace of Swords. You might have come to an epiphany in the recent past that that was the case. You could be facing a lot of truths right now. The thing about the Ace of Swords, yeah, it's coming with the confrontation card. Loud and clear. The thing with the Ace of Swords is it can come in like a thunderbolt of awareness. And it can certainly shake your axis. Because suddenly you're face to face with that Three of Swords. And that's past energy coming to the surface. We'll clarify. Let's see in the present. Too many. In the solar calm. In the present. Look. Oh my goodness, the sun. That's clarity too, but that's also a new awareness, rebirthing energy, clarity, a new beginning, and it's tied to that sacral chakra. Look at the bright colors. There could be a lot of healing around your childhood stuff. You know, whatever that is, you guys. It doesn't have to be, you know, so, so heavy. But it could be affecting something in terms of your success. But currently, you're regenerating and it has to do with confronting this or, or gaining this knowledge. Let's see. What's in the near future here? With the south node. Interesting, the near future. South node is your past. Let's see. Why is this here, please? A 33 card. Threes are the Empress, it's healing, it's creativity. The Three of Wands, <laughs> I like that. It's like, the truth is that whatever you learned in the past through this wounding is what you're framing your future, like you're reframing it. 
that's what's happening with the sun. And those wands are reignited, and the wands are your creativity, direct sacral chakra energy, and also your joy and your fire. And you're using that to frame your future. Interesting. It's like you've transmuted what you, you've transmuted the experience through clarity and confronting whatever these issues are head on. Because when the North Node shifts and you get that calling, it isn't very comfortable. Same with Venus retrograde in Leo. That is heavily debilitated. It doesn't like that position. It's not very Leo-like. Okay, North Node, your future. We get Scorpio, transformation. Wow. Scorpio is the eighth house, and as we're moving out of uh, the south node was in Scorpio. We're moving out of that. It's going into Libra, which is balance, harmony, and partnership. Because of this transformation, that's why it was necessary, this healing. Because look, it's attached to your north node, your future. Scorpio is the eighth house. It's our shadows. It's Pluto, karma. What keeps us down, what keeps us debilitated, living in lack, that kind of thing. And here's the healing with forgiveness. That's what I love. And under that is abundance. It's literally the thing, the key. What a powerful reading. No wonder I was feeling so drawn to it. Okay. Let's move these over. I have a few more questions. Okay, let's see where you're headed then. Let's see. All right. Okay, I'll take two. The nine of wands and the seven of wands. Wow, it's, see this one saying you're almost there. This is temporary. The nine of wands is necessary. It brings in the final step, the final wand the final step on your path to conclude this. That's why the retrograde is happening because whatever this is about for you is the last step before you get to where you're going. The seven of fire is showing up as your willingness to battle through it. There could be at this time people from your past with the south node trying to prevent that sort of transformation, Scorpio, from happening as you move into your future, because that's common, particularly if this wounding comes from your past. Wands are all about passion and fire, and it's about harnessing that and that belief. That's why you're given the three of fire here. Wow, though, that's where you're headed. Okay, well, what is the challenge then, really? Okay, the challenge. The, that's funny. I just saw this on the bottom of the deck, the seven of earth. And the five of wands. Okay. In the challenge, those two together for me, it's like there's a lot of groundwork you need to lay. There's a lot of planning. But the seven of wands, is, or a pentacles, sorry, is a bit of a pause. And a, a, an assessment, seeing where you're at and where you still need to go and what more you have to invest. For me in this situation, the five of wands is an internal struggle. It's like you have a lot of ideas. There's a lot of possibilities. But right now you're just sort of stopping and seeing where you want to go from here. Okay, I'll get a potential outcome at the end. I'm going to the, uh, oops, the wild unknown. This is quite the reading. Why is the ace of pent or the ace of air here in the recent past? Okay, okay, you wanted to come out, that's for sure. Oh, there's that five of pentacles. So you confronted that and you understood what kept you in that feeling of lack. This is a perfect depiction of what I'm talking about. See that beautiful rose that should be in full bloom. It carries with it love, Venus energy, but look, it's losing its bloom because of the lack. And in this case, I'm so much getting that as something internal or an internal belief system that's kept you feeling that way. Okay. Or choices you made in your past, perhaps. That could be. 
All right, let's move to the sun. The Queen of Cups. Cancer energy as we head into cancer season here. The Queen of Cups is about the ultimate emotional vulnerability. It's about nurturing, healing, and here it's attached to the sun. So whether this is somebody external to you or an energy within that's Look at how the swan is holding her wing protectively over that cup. That cup is the Ace of Cups. So for me, the Queen of Cups always reminds me that there's always a new beginning. And there it is with the sun. Very healing energy here with these two. Queen of Cups. Why is the Queen of Cups here, please? That's very nice. Also very motherly energy, and we have reparenting yourself there. The Queen of Cups is the mother of the tarot, for me. Six of Pentacles. We have the Seven of Pentacles here. Five, six, seven. Is there some kind of balance being restored? Some kind of offer? Oh, it's beautiful. It's like that nurturing is bringing in an energetic balance where there was this lack there is now growth see the rose was about to to drop all its flowers and here reblooming getting water finally very nice all right three of fire in the near future the chariot we are in cancer season we're also in can the year of cancer 2023 numerically adds up to the number seven, which is the chariot. Sorry, you guys, I just have to get a sip. I love the chariot here. And also, it's so cool that they tie in the opposite energy of Capricorn with this pentacle around the neck. But that's about, like, traveling victoriously being able to now understand where you're headed and why. And whatever this is that you're visualizing with the three of fire, you're traveling towards that fast. It's taking control of your dark side. The thing with deep emotional energy like Cancerian energy is the pendulum can swing both ways. Hence the dark and light horses pulling the chariot. And you can go that way and then that way and then that way. And this is about taking control of that and harnessing it to head towards that future we see here with the three of fire. Why is the chariot here? Pardon my voice, you guys. Wow, this is super intense. Why is the chariot here, please? Thank you. The star, no way. Aquarius is major arcana. And that's what we were talking about in the opening with the healing and the future. The new hope, the wish. This is going towards that. There's the healing. And you addressed it by facing it head on. That's what was holding you back. Transformation in the north node. Lovely combination. We have 33 and 34 side by side. The Page of Swords, Gemini. One more. The Page of Swords has to do with getting curious, wanting more information perhaps. Oh, whoa, look at this. The Nine of Swords, more air energy. Boy, there's a lot of air on the table. Aquarius, Libra, and Gemini, that's a lot of mental activity taking place. The Nine of Swords is very stressed out. It's trying to predict things you can't predict the outcome possibly because you can't see it with the logic, with the eyes. So it's kind of making yourself crazy trying to figure something out to the point that it doesn't even make sense anymore. And the Daughter of Swords here, the Page of Swords, with the Death and Transformation... This, this transformation could be causing you a lot of anxiety as well. Okay. Or this is someone around you. Eight of Pentacles. Two of Pentacles. Those came out together. That's the Ten of Pentacles. Pentacles. 
you might be worried about the amount of work it's going to take for you to have that transformation, that transition. You might worry where your stability is going to come from. This is definitely putting in a lot of hard work, for sure. But there's something with this Nine of Swords. There's like something you're worried about. Why? The Page of Swords pays close attention. What are you worried about with this transformation? I mean, Scorpio energy is very intense. That is for sure. It's not subtle. If you're dealing with a Scorpio energy, it's the entire job of the energy is to create change and transformation. And it's, you know, poor Scorpios, it's not like they try. And it can be a very painful process in relationship for them, too. It's just the nature. Libra. This, the south node and north node shift there. Harmony and balance. It's what you deserve. And that's attached to your future. Interesting. Libra rules the seventh house of the zodiac. It's all about relationships and Venus energy. And the balancing out. See, we have that dark and light again. There could be something about that here as well. Whatever dark and light is, you know, shadow energies and light energies coming together and forming that yin-yang, right? But there's something you're definitely curious about and it's causing you a lot of stress. I'm not sure what that's about. It might be different for all of you. Okay. The Nine of Fire and the Seven of Wands is pretty straightforward to me. But, but let's give it a go. What is this seven? Let's do the seven. What's the struggle? What do you have to battle? Two. Okay. There's Scorpio again with death and transformation. And the Knight of Pentacles. All right. I see. Okay, now it makes sense. I'm so sorry, you guys. You might have been putting in a lot of hard work and effort for quite some time in this process, this healing process through Chiron. The North and South Node, by the way, lasts for about 18 months. So this could go back for a year and a half or so. And at this point, you could be stressed out about, like, where's the justice? When will the balance come? What more do you need to do sort of energy? Because in the challenges, you're at the Nine of Wands almost. And there's the transformation. But it's attached to the Knight of Pentacles. So it's saying the reason why is because what you're building next is incredibly solid. Perhaps that's a lesson that you learned before. But this takes time and diligence and close attention to the details here. So when you say what more might you need to do, it could be attached to your calling with the star and the North Node and the Eight of Pentacles. It could be for a lot of you money and your career. Definitely. But it's taking a long time to cultivate. So this is saying in your challenges, it's like you don't know how much longer you're tired of fighting for this. Let's get one more. What is the Nine of Wands? Why is that there? Oh, Gemini, the lovers, there's a choice. It, the lovers is a difficult energy and it does cause transformation because it's not necessarily voluntary. It's your heart calling out to itself. It can appear in the form of another person. It can appear in the form of a split in your path. Or an energy of like being tired of not being seen, recognized, fed, given what you deserve. Something like that. So a choice has to be made, but the dilemma is, yeah, you're tired of fighting for it. It's taking a long time. Five of fire and the seven of earth. Wow, the wheel. <laughs> I'm glad that came out. That's destiny. It's also got to do with timing. Let's get a couple of more. Two energies of Sagittarius and then the Page of Wands. Okay, so by Sagittarius season, this is it. There's a big plan happening and the universe is working with you on this. It's your destiny. There's the fortune. 
turning and you manifested that back here with this clarity but Sagittarius season is coming through really strong here in these cards so that's November and then there's the new beginning with the page of wands it's a long fight yeah six of swords on the bottom of the deck you're still moving towards that rainbow that brighter future it's there but there was some, there's a lot of internal work happening for you right now. It could be appearing external too as you clear up things from the past. It's a lot of work. And it's definitely causing you anxiety. It could be about leaving a workplace. And you're worried about what you're creating in the future here. Again, Venus rules money, right? But for some of you, it's definitely... As I mentioned, that soulmate energy, which never comes at a good time. And it appears that this perhaps came right on time, but also at a challenging time, which they usually do. Interestingly, let's do, what do we want to close this with? I'm not feeling the romance angels on this one. Let's do the lover's oracle. What else? These can come out as advice, you guys, so please only take it as it resonates. Oh my gosh, I didn't even draw a potential outcome. I am so sorry, you guys. Let's do an outcome card. I told you, this energy is intense. The Four of Earth, so this is through that retrograde. And the Four of Earth is, of course, Earth energy, Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn, and it's stabilizing. But it's also not movement. The Hierophant. Okay, so again, it could be you leaving a job. That's Taurus energy. Commitment, a structure. This could have to do with your belief systems. Let's get one more. But Sag season here is showing up. Okay. And the Seven of Cups. Six of Cups on the bottom of the deck. So it's destiny. I'm telling you, this has something to do with this lover's energy that's representing a choice for you. And it's keeping you in a, in a place of not being able to move for now. That's that Venus energy. But look, the chariot's in the near future. It could be contractual. It could be your own belief systems. It could be a company. Any kind of structure that can kind of make you feel debilitated, stuck. That's why maybe you haven't been moving on from whatever it is. It has to do with all of this. Debilitated and heartache and loss. I love that the Six of Cups is on the bottom of the deck. Because that's a return to the innocence. And this also attaches to your true calling, your north and south node. It could go back to childhood. And we have that with reparenting yourself. It does have to do with your belief systems. That's what it is. I'm sorry, it's such a deep energy. But the Hierophant and the Seven of Cups, I was just tying it to the reparenting yourself. And the Six of Cups. Now the High Priestess, yeah, it's affecting you on a kind of a psychic level, keeping you in a kind of that state of confusion, locked in a certain belief system, Four of Pentacles. That's not being able to move on. Or making you believe that you can't take risks in some way. So that's what this retrograde healing is all about, if you resonate with this. Okay, now let's get some from the Lover's Oracle. Let's get some advice. Whew. I knew it wasn't going to be fun, you guys. But I hope it helps. There's definitely, it's always for a good reason. Because look what we have. The Sun, the Queen of Cups, the Chariot, the Lovers. It's, but this always comes up when that kind of intense energy is there. It's kind of a gift. Reflection. Give each other some space at the moment. Trust and have faith that all will, will work out for the best. That could have to do with the retrograde. It might be time to sort of do some more internal work. What else? As I say, when these energies come together, the soulmate energies. So for many of you, this could be about a separation 
And this is the work taking place. Emotions are a natural and necessary part of life. Whoa, but they can also distort your perception and cloud your vision. In order to see things clearly, you must let go of resentment. I'm freaking out. That's the Seven of Cups and the Hierophant. That's what I was just getting there. In order to look, you got to let it go. The Four of Earth doesn't let it go. Holds on to it. Because there's some kind of stability in the past. In the South Node, it's your comfort zone. And it doesn't require you to take any leaps of faith. Reparenting yourself ties into that. It distorts your vision. It's time for forgiveness on the bottom of the deck. The Six of Cups is here to say that's it's where it comes from and why it's affecting you on this deep of a level with that High Priestess. Thanks, Chiron. It is a, it's intense. Chiron is always connected to the Hierophant. Don't make decisions based on guilt or what you think you should do. For it is only being true to your, in being true to yourself that you can be true to others. I concur. And so does the reading. And then romance. Cupid's arrow strikes. And there it is towards the end. But this is the issue. That's why Venus is going retrograde. To give you that opportunity with Chiron to do all this. And you're almost there. You're at the Nine of Wands. Beautiful reading, my friends. I hope this helps some of you. I hope it resonates. Well, yeah, I hope it resonated because ultimately everything astrological is our gift and our tool to use so we know how to navigate towards the greatest success, which is exactly what the Three of Wands and the Chariot is. It's beautiful. You take care through this, my friends. I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.